a little instruction this morning that comes uh, from this under shepherd, uh, I believe a word from the great shepherd. Um, this is unprecedented days that we are living in. We all know that. <clears throat> and I think just to let you know, uh, just to be wise, we want to be like a wise virgin, right? Well, we don't want to be caught unprepared. And you may say, well, Pastor Ray, this, this is not uh, Y2K. I think some wisdom would be for you to... Uh, um, these next few days in America could be some pretty bumpy days. And uh, I, I would just encourage you, I'm not trying to instill fear. How, how many of you ever seen uh, uh, a herd of sheep on a hillside and the shepherd's there and the dog's there, but all of a sudden here comes some, some wolves and the, sh the flock just scatters. I'm not here to instill fear because the great shepherd has got us. He's taken good care of us. But he gave us, I always tell people, he gave us a brain. And he gives us wisdom. And so we want to take uh, that and we want to do some, make some preparations. Uh, and I think it'd be very wise for you to maybe buy some extra groceries. I think it would be very wise for you to set up a form of, of communication other than what you have, uh, you know, your, your phone. I think it would be wise for you to get some extra waters in your home, fill your tank with gas, get some bottle gas. I think it would be very wise for you to take precautions. Take some, uh, I'm not trying to instill fear. I'm just trying to tell you that these next days in America could, could be bumpy. And I don't want you to go out of here and say, well, nobody warned me. Nobody told me. I was left completely in the dark and unprepared. So uh, you can do whatever you want. Um, but uh, the Bible says in uh, Luke 21, 26, in the King James Version, uh, that when things begin to happen on the face of the earth, men's hearts will fail them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And in the NIV, it says people will faint from terror. Apprehensive of what is coming on the world. We have never seen days like we are living in. Not to be fearful. But we have never seen. We don't know what's coming. But I think it's, I think it's wise to be wise. Yes. Receive that this morning? Amen. Amen. All right. We'll go ahead and dismiss our youth and our children. As before you go, before you go, I want to speak a declaration over the youth and over our children. And last night when we were praying, we went through the youth room and we went through the children's rooms. And we are declaring revival in the youth room. We are declaring an outpouring of the Holy Ghost in the youth room. We are declaring that our children will be filled with the Holy Ghost. That they will prophesy. That they will be leaders in this church. That's what we're declaring. We're standing upon that. I believe, I believe, I believe that that is more than possible. That's what the Lord wants. So I just declare that you leaders, that you don't, don't shy back from leading your, 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 your youth and, and your children into the infilling of the Holy Ghost, into the, the gifts of the Spirit of God. And we're going to see a, a mighty outpouring, not only in here, but back there. And, uh, well, I'll, I'll just go on. All right, go ahead, we'll go ahead and dismiss. So this morning, I had a few different things uh, that I felt like um, the Lord may want us to do. Um, I feel like some of some of that 
we'll hold for this evening. <clears throat> As I was praying this week, um, the Lord gave me this message, and, and it's very simple, but it packs a punch for the day that we're living in. It's not like last Sunday. I'm not going to keep you here till, till 3 o'clock. If the Holy Ghost keeps you here till 3 o'clock, that's wonderful. But I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> so this is a very, very simple message. And uh, if you turn in your Bibles to Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Deuteronomy, chapter 20. I think it's good that we uh, bring our Bibles, that we look into the Word of God. All right, and see, wow, Pastor Ray, is he's not detracting from the Word of God, and he is not adding to it. He is speaking exactly what the Word of the Lord says. Deuteronomy chapter 20, and when you're there, if you would stand for the reading of the Word. Just four, just four verses in Deuteronomy chapter 20. I think it's always good that we salute the Word of God. And it says in Deuteronomy chapter 20, beginning in the first verse, it says, When you go out to battle against your enemies, and when you see horses and chariots and a people more than you, this is the word of the Lord, don't be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with you who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Isn't that a promise? The Lord your God is with you. Hallelujah. Verse 2 says, And it shall be when you are come near to the battle that the priest shall approach and speak to the people and say to them, Hear, O Israel. Hear, O body of Christ. Your approach this day to battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not and do not tremble. Neither be you terrified of them. For the Lord your God is he that goes with you to fight for you against your enemies. And more than that, to save you. Hallelujah to fight for you, and to save you. Hallelujah. Father, we're encouraged already. If that's all we did was read that this morning, we got a full tank of gas. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the reading of your word. Thank you for the enlightenment by the Spirit of God. Lord, all of us need help to to uh, literally apprehend this today and, and to literally put it on, wear it, dress it. It's part of the fabric of who we are. And so we thank you that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt this is your word to us this day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Welcome to be seated. Hallelujah. In the first verse, we read that it says that there will be a company of people more than you and more than me. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you this morning that the enemy is bigger than you and he's bigger than me. There is no one in this building this morning that is capable of fighting the devil on your own power. But verse 3 says, fear not, let not your heart faint, do not tremble, neither be ye terrified. Because verse 4 says, for the Lord your God is he that goes out with you to fight against all of your enemies to save you. Hallelujah. And then verse 8 says, and the officers shall speak further to the people, and they will say, What man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go 
and returned to his house, lest his brother's, brother's heart faint as well as his own heart. So what the Lord is saying to us here this morning and to all of you that are watching online, wherever you may be, uh, here in America and around the world, the Lord is saying, I know what you're going through, but I have made you a promise. No matter how strong your enemies be, no matter how evil they get, no matter how much things are quaking and shaking, I'm going to fight for you and I'm going to be with you and I am the Lord God and I'm not going to let you down. But, there's a but, but if you're going to faint, he's saying in the 8th verse, if you're going to faint, go and do it by yourself. Go ahead on out someplace and faint out there. But don't do it among the armies of the Lord. Don't infect my army with your faint-heartedness. See, faint-heartedness is a disease. And it's very infectious. See, when you faint in following the Lord... It means that you have rejected His promises when He has given you everything that you need to make it from day to day. See, it's simply enough when He says, I will be with you. That's enough. That's a full tank. Put it in the vault. I'll be with you. It's enough when He says, I will fight for you. It's enough. It's enough when he says that those that are going to come against you, they're bigger than you and they're stronger than you, but I'm going to fight for you. That's enough. Some of you, your problems are big. They're big. You're facing enormous problems in your life and in your home and on your job, wherever, whatever. In America, we all know what's going on in America. There's so much unrest, so much turmoil. There's unrest for those that are liberals. There's unrest for those that are conservative. There's unrest for those that are Christians. Unrest for the ungodly. There's unrest for the rich. There's unrest for the poor. There's all kinds of tension and worry and fret. And it causes people to come to the point of simply saying, I can't go on. I can't go on. I cannot carry this load anymore. But the Lord says, if you're going to faint, do it by yourself. Because God says, I'm not going to allow faint-heartedness in my house and among my people. I will not permit it. He is loving, but he is saying that if you're going to talk defeat, and if you're going to talk about quitting, and if you're going to use the me syndrome, it's all about me, then God says go off somewhere all by yourself and enjoy your own little party. But don't come in among my armies and inflict that upon them. It says one more time in the 8th verse, what man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return to his own house, lest his brethren's heart faint as well as his own heart. We know that God is patient. He's a loving God. He's kind. But he is also firm in what he expects from his children. God makes it very clear and the Holy Spirit has made it very clear that me, I cannot wallow in fear. I cannot cower and run and hide by what I see going on in my nation's capital. God has dealt with me. And he has said, Ray, you can't preach faith and then allow fear in a time of crisis or a hard time. You can't testify to others 
about faith, uh, if you faint and you cower and you doubt, isn't it amazing that we believe God to save us, but we don't believe God to keep us? We believe God can give us eternal life, but we don't believe God can help us in our finances. We believe God can, can give us a, a hope for tomorrow, but He's not going to help me on my job. He's not going to help me with my finance. He's not going to help me with my marriage. We lose faith when it comes to keeping us from COVID. Some of you all have testified about that. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Almost everybody in this house believes that God has the power to keep you, that you're not going to go to hell, you're going to heaven. Are you convinced of that this morning? Okay. But let me tell you that if God has the power to deliver you from the kingdom of darkness and save your soul... Certainly, he has the power to keep you while you're here. He has that power to keep you while you are here. Over in the 25th chapter of Deuteronomy, and beginning in the 17th verse, this is what God said to Israel. He said, remember what Amalek did to you by the way when you were come forth out of Egypt how he met you by the way and he smote the hindmost of you even all that were feeble behind you when you were faint and weary and feared not God he Amalek did not fear God so God's saying you you people of Israel when you you came out of Egypt and when you were in the wilderness the Amalekites circled around you and they came primarily behind you. And in the latter part of you Israelites, you children of Israel, there were those that were faint hearted and those that were tired and those that were weary. Amalek came and he smote those weary ones. And that's the danger of any one of us allowing our spirit to get to the place to where we're ready, where we're weary, and we're ready to give up. Because you open yourself up to all kinds of attacks from the enemy. Do you know what Absalom said about his father David when he rose up against, uh, against his father? Absalom was given this advice. He said, he was given this advice, wait till he's tired and weary. And then we'll attack him. Wait till he's tired and weary, and then we'll go in for the kill. And that's what I'm warning us about this morning. Don't grow weary. Don't grow tired. Come on Saturday night and get an infilling. But that's the exact trick of the devil. He waits till you're down, and he waits till you're weary. And you're tired and about to faint. And then he comes from behind and attacks. And the Lord says, don't allow yourself to get to that point where you are faint. He says, remember how the enemy works. He waits till you're vulnerable. And then he attacks. Think of the case of Job. The devil waited till Job was weary and discouraged. Job literally says, why didn't I die when I was coming out of my mother's womb? That's pretty weary and that's pretty, <laughs> pretty discouraged. Why didn't I just die when, when I was coming out of my mother's womb? And then his wife, who is sent by the devil, said, Job, haven't you had enough? Why don't you just curse God and die? The enemy will always come at you with all those kind of suggestions when you allow your heart to begin to faint. 
And nowadays, in the day and age that we're living in, we've never lived in these kind of days as we are now. A lot of people are allowing their heart to grow weary and faint because of the battle that we face every day. See, there is an unseen battle that was raging in the heavenlies. And you and I are involved in that unseen battle that is waging in the realm of the Spirit. And many times when you get up in the morning and you've slept eight full hours and you get up in the morning and you're just worn out, you're just... You're just like you're just drained. Well, there's, a, there's been a battle going on all night long, and you're a part of that battle because you're engaged as a, a soldier in the army of the Lord. And so it, you, it's wearing. I understand it's wearing in these days, but don't grow faint. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged and weary. With all of the strife that's going on in America and the spirit of Antichrist, that is raging. It is easy in our flesh to rise up and when we, like a geyser, we spout off. But the battle needs to be waged in the realm of the Spirit. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Everybody wants to be right. Everybody wants to be, well, I told you so. But don't we want to be pleasing to the Lord and doing His will? He promised he promised, he promised, he promised he'd take care of you and me. When David and his, this is in 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter, we're not going to read it, but in 1 Samuel and 30, there's, there's a story of David and his men. He's got 600 guys with him, and he has just come back from waging a, a battle. He's in the army of the Lord, and he is, he is in the Lord's battle. And he and his men are coming back to Ziklag. Ziklag is where their families are, their wives, their flocks. And what has happened when they've been gone fighting the Lord's battle, the Amalekites, one more time, somebody should have exterminated them guys a long time ago. <laughs> but the Amalekites come. They come to Ziklag. They, they pillage the place. They burn it. They take their, their wives, their children, their flocks, and they head out. And now all of a sudden, here comes David and his 600 men. They come up over the hill, over the knoll of the hill, and there's Ziklag, and it's still smoking and burning, and everything's gone. If you were one of those guys with David, wouldn't you be, like, mad at David? you'd be like, you left all of our families vulnerable to enemies. And so, yes, all those guys, all of his men that were with him, they were mad at David. And they were ready to stone him. They were ready to exterminate him. But the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. He too was weary. He too, his family had been taken. But the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. And David and his 600 guys, they go towards where the Amalekites are headed. David and his men come to a brook called Besor. When they get to the brook Besor, 200 of the 600 could go no further. They were injured. They were, they were nursing wounds. They were absolutely and completely and totally exhausted. And they said, we can go no further. So they stopped on this side of the brook Besor. But David and his 400 men went into the waters of Besor. And they came out on the other side. Because you know what Besor means in Hebrew? It means refreshment. They went into the waters of Besor. And they came out on the other side refreshed. 
There are times in your life when you will become very weary and just barely able to put one front in front of the other. But God gives the refreshment that you need one step at a time. God may not give you the whole reservoir of refreshing at one time, but He gives you what you need when you need it, when you say, I can't take another step. Refreshing. And I can keep on going. Hallelujah. So David went into the brook, and he was refreshed because he is trusting God. God told him, go. On this side, you're weary. You step into a time of refreshing. God says, go, because you're going to recover all. Get up in the morning. You're weary. Can barely put one step in front of the other. But you crack open God's word, and all of a sudden, you become refreshed. You get a word from God. And God says, just go. All of that junk is in the past. You're on a brand new road. And guess what? Full recovery is in view. Hallelujah. Praise God. So David went. He crossed the brook. Be sore. Holy Spirit refreshed him. They went on. Recovered their families. Recovered their children, recovered all their goods, their flocks, and then that wasn't enough. The Bible said, a great spoil. See, God overcompensates, doesn't he? Hallelujah. That's right. Over in the book of Psalms, in the 18th verse, it says, the sorrows of hell and death compassed me about. And the floods of ungodly made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. And I cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. And my cry came before him, even into his ears. Verse 16 says, He sent from above. He took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy, and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. Aren't you glad for those times of refreshing? Not necessarily even just daily, but sometimes just hourly. You just, you just need it. Some mornings I get up and I say, Lord... I am unable to face this day without you helping me, without you refreshing me. And the Lord just says, take a step. Keep moving. Keep doing what you're doing. You're going to recover all, plus a great spoil. You ever get out of bed in the morning and you feel like just, peeling back the covers and crawling back in. That was me this morning. <laughs> Take a shower, and you're still unable to shake the exhaustion. But then you say, Lord, I'm your child. I can't face this day unless you help me. I can't face my boss today. I can't face that bunch of heathens that I work with unless you help me, all of a sudden, hallelujah, something goes off on the inside of you, Holy Ghost comes upon you and refreshes you, and you go throughout your day, and then you look back and you realize, God did it. He took me. He supplied all that I needed. I called upon the Lord in the morning. It doesn't look how, it, may, it doesn't matter how it looks in the morning. Just get up. Allow the Holy Ghost to refresh you and go on. 
See, the Bible says that we live and we move and we walk in the power of the Spirit. Not in our human will, not in our human resources, but in the power of the Spirit of the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord are the ones who walk in to be sore and are refreshed. Scripture says, let us not grow weary in well-doing for in due season. We shall reap as we faint not. See, you can be doing the work of the Lord. You can be, you can be involved in ministry and grow weary and faint. I, I know of pastors that are, are retiring at 55, at 58, 62, 63. They're retiring, and literally they're counting the days. I just can't wait till I'm done with this. Me, I'm just getting started. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm just getting started. I'm, I'm not even thinking about retiring or quitting because I, I think maybe one day I'll be up here and I'll be preaching and all of a sudden, where's that shofar, Sister Pastor Kim? I hear the sound of the trump and I am gone. Hallelujah. See, I don't think a man that has the fire burning in his bones can retire. But there's so much stuff that goes on in churches, let alone the world. In so many churches, there's so much slander, and there's backbiting, and there's difficulties. There's very little true love, very little unity. And, and pastors just get tired of it, and they quit. And maybe you're sitting here this morning, you're at the point of fainting. Maybe you're just counting the days to where you can retire, and you're going to think, everything's going to be okay when I retire. Well, that sounds good, but you're still in a spiritual battle. What's going on is of the Spirit. Weary in well-doing. Lots of times we encounter ministers' wives. We were at a pastor's conference, and, and, and the Lord just, he is so amazing. God, the leaders had to be gone, and so Pastor Kim and I, we got a chance. It was the completely the leading of the Holy Spirit. Had no idea. All of a sudden, we got to minister to pastors, and pastors' wives. And pastors' wives just began to just unload and just dump. See, lots of times pastors are, I hate to say it, but lots of times pastors are oblivious to what's going on in their wives' life because they're so consumed by taking care of the congregation. Many ministers' wives grow weary because they've been the brunt of so many people's bad behavior and their unkind words. And some pastor's wives don't even come to church with their husbands because they can't handle any more trash from the people in church. I'm speaking the truth here this morning. And the same in the congregation. Many are burned out. David said in Psalms 25, 17, he said, the trouble of my heart has been now become enlarged. In other words, he's saying, my troubles just got worse and worse. In the 17th verse of the 25th chapter, he said, the trouble of my hearts are enlarged. Oh, bring me out of my distresses. Look upon my affliction and my pain and forgive all of my sins. David's talking about a personal problem here that is causing him to grow weary and to suffer pain. And for a lot of you, I don't know what your personal problem may be. I don't know what pain that you are dealing with right now. It may be physical. It may be a painful memory or a painful experience. You may be traumatized and get very little escape from the pain. You may be going through spiritual pain. pain. You may be going through pain in your marriage. 
You may be locked into a situation that is painful. Maybe you walk in the doors of your home and immediately that's painful. Maybe you just lost your spouse or maybe you want to be married or maybe you want to be unmarried. Our God is a healer. You may be sitting here this morning and in pain and you're in angry, in angry and in agony and you're saying, Pastor, I cannot continue to go on the way things are. All the pain, all the suffering, all the agony. Many people saying, I can't go on. I have so many personal problems, the troubles of my heart. David said, the troubles of my heart are enlarged. When I want to escape them, they get more and more and more. Oh, bring me out. Bring me out of my distresses. Look upon my afflictions and my pain. So David is saying he's at a time when he is, he is numb. He can hardly even talk. He's numb with the pain of his heart. He said, my heart is aching within me. I, I, there's fearfulness and there's trembling that have come upon me. Horror has overwhelmed me. He said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, that I would fly away and find some rest. Don't tell me you haven't thought about that. Oh, that I had wings like a dove, and I would fly away, and I'd find a secluded place, away from anybody and everybody, and I'd get some rest. How many of you here this morning, and I don't want you to lift your hands, but how many of you have had it so bad that you thought, if I could just go away someplace and isolate myself and be alone, but here's the deal. Wherever you go, you are there. Wherever you go, you're there. You can't get away from it. You can't hide the pain that you're in. See, pain numbs you. And you cry, God, I've cried out to you. I've done everything that I know to do. But there doesn't seem to be any relief. How much, God, do you expect me to take? Does that sound familiar to any of you this morning? Psalms 23 he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We are in a painful time. There may, you may have personal pain. You may have pain in your marriage. You may have physical pain. You may have relationship pain. Many are losing heart. And they're just checking out. And it can be people in church. Psalms 55, 12 says, For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it if it had been my enemy. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hidden myself from him. But it was you. A man my equal, my guide, my acquaintance. In other words, my friend. Pastor Kim and I were talking about this on the way to church this morning. We were talking about friends. And we were saying, and I'm sure you've probably found this out. Isn't it hard to find a true friend? Isn't it hard to, w that, to find a friend that, that will tell you uh, when you tell them something, they will say, I will keep that in confidence. I will tell no one. A short time later, they have spewed all this out and I'm like, I told Pastor Kim, I said, that's not a friend. 
that is an enemy. You cannot trust them. They'll say one thing, but they'll do something else as soon as your back is turned. It's hard to find a true friend. But David said it was you. Somebody that I counted as my equal. Somebody that I thought I could confide in. Somebody that I thought was my friend. My guide, my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together. We fellowshiped together. We went and ate out together. We went and had great fellowship together. And we walked into the house of God in company. In other words, it's church people too. That you can't trust. So he said, I could have taken the pain if, if it was a stranger that hurt me. But it was somebody close to me that hurt me. And that's the worst kind of pain, isn't it? When it comes from somebody that you trusted and they turn on you and they hurt you. So, Alex, as I begin to close, I want to give you just a couple of things what I believe that God wants you to have. And this is the whole crux of my message. What do I do, Pastor Ray, when I don't feel I can go any further? What do I do? When I reach the end, and I feel like I'm done, and I'm almost too worn out to even shed a tear, I can't even cry out to God. If you're near that place, I got some good advice for you that is from the Holy Ghost. Here's my advice. Go home. Lay down on your bed. Look up to Jesus and say, Jesus, I can't take any more, but would you hold me? Would you just embrace me? Would you just hold me, Lord? You may be one here this morning who are going to bed without your husband or your wife. It may be your parent that is no longer here to hold you and to, to talk to. Commit yourself to the arms of the Lord. And tell him, Lord, I can't handle it anymore. He won't rebuke you. He won't be angry with you. He is a God of love. When you say, Jesus, I can't pray, please hold me. Oh, hallelujah. He comes. He comes. Back over in Deuteronomy, uh, the 33rd verse, 33rd chapter, verse 26, it says, There is none like to the Lord of Jeshurun, who rides upon the heaven in your help and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is your refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before you and say, destroy them. Song of Solomon 2.6. This is pretty cool. He says, his left hand is under my head and his right hand does embrace me. So if you're hurting, I say, go home. And tell Jesus, Jesus, would you just put your arms around me? Because it says that his left hand is around your neck and his right hand is caressing your face. And he's telling you, child, everything's going to be all right. Because I'm going to give you strength and I'm going to deliver you. And if you get news that says that you're going to die, that's the best kind of news that you can get because soon you'll be in the arms of Jesus and you can just say, thank you, Lord, for taking me out of here. I was done with this place anyhow. Amen. Secondly, what do you do when you feel like you're going to faint? Spend more time waiting on the Lord instead of brooding. Spend more, spend more time waiting on the Lord instead of brooding. If you got time to brood, and if you got time to weary and grow faint, you got time to seek the Lord. You got time to seek the Lord. Over in the book of Isaiah, <clears throat> this is cool, you'll love this. Isaiah 40, 
Verse 25. To whom then will I liken me or shall be my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and behold who has created these things that brings out their host by number. He calls them by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong and in power, not one that fails. Why say you, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faints not? Neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even to the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord shall not faint. Would you stand with me this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, I think I need to read that again. Have you not heard, have you not known this? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faints not. Neither is weary. He gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall be refreshed. Many of you that are watching online today and those of you that are in this sanctuary today, I know you love the Lord dearly, but you are in a painful place and you say Lord unless you help me I can't go on and if that's you I would say be bold enough this morning to step out and come on up here because God is going to help you and God is going to deliver you don't worry about who's around you it doesn't matter what they think this is about you and him this is about vertical if you need help you need deliverance today i urge you come on down here 